Can you start off by telling us a bit about um, your organization and what you do? Yeah, sure. The International Peatland Society is an organization that combines all aspects of peat and peatlands. Therefore, we have three commissions. And these commissions are actually based on sustainable development. That means environment, economics, and society. And within these three commissions, we have different expert groups. They talk about conservation, restoration, climate change, peat extraction, growing media, energy, culture, um, medicine, peat is also used, used in, in medical applications, and other things. So we cover the whole range of different uh, aspects that have to do with peat, peatlands. So there is a lot of interest around peat. Seems like a silly an uh, question, but why should we care about peat? Why are we having a dedicated Global Landscapes Forum just on peat today? Well, that's an interesting question. The, the answer can be very interesting too, though. Um, if you look at peatlands, peatlands are interesting because of these different aspects that I just mentioned. And we're here today because there's one aspect of special interest. That is greenhouse gas emissions and restoration of peatlands. And these two aspects, they have risen in the last 10, 20 years. Before that, no one was talking about CO2 emissions. People were talking about, how can I develop a peatland? That was the main goal. In particular, in, in Germany, where we started like 250 years ago, we also burned peatlands. And then that was forbidden. And then agriculture was the main aspect of all of this. Agriculture, forestry, and settlements. You know? And uh, yeah, that's, that's the main aspect, actually. Yeah. What's interesting is, you know, peatlands, we're here in Indonesia, and um, we constantly think of these countries with tropical peat. Um, but Germany, as you said, you've dealt with peat issues many, many, many years ago. Can you talk a bit about the specific challenges or differences of peat in, in Northern Europe? We started in Germany, in particular, uh, peatland development after 1765. That's when Frederick the Great proclaimed a declaration on the development of wastelands. In those days, peatlands were wastelands. The government wanted to get rid of wastelands for people to settle and to uh, farm. And nowadays, it's of course different. But that goal in principle was uh, was that goal until 1981. The government wanted to develop peatlands. But now uh, things have changed and we're looking at peatlands from a different point of view. Uh, we would like to restore them, and that's what we're doing. And uh, on the other hand, peatlands are still used for the production of uh, peat for growing media in Germany in particular. Germany is the country in the world with the biggest production of growing media. And growing media are used in various uh, applications in horticulture. And horticulture is a sector of agriculture. So these materials, these products uh, are very important. Can you tell people who are not familiar with this term, what is growing media? Growing media are materials in which plants are grown. Growing media are produced commercially. Peat is the main material. You can use other materials, but other materials have more or less negative um, characteristics. Either the pH is too high or there's too much potassium or other nutrients in it, so it has to be diluted with peat. And peat has excellent physical, chemical, and biological products, uh, uh, properties. And uh, that's why peat worldwide is the main material that is being used. Mm. And, and how much of that growing media is coming from peat today? It's about worldwide, I would say, 40 million cubic meters. Mm. Peat is sold 
by volume. That's why I'm saying cubic meters. Yeah. So that's that's uh, a big a big amount, mm -hmm. but uh, it might increase even in the in the future because some countries want to expand the production of uh, growing media, mm -hmm. like China. Mm -hmm. China uses, uh, like you know, China is a big country, 1.4 billion people, and they all want to eat. Mm -hmm. They want to secure their food supply. And they are currently using about 5 million cubic meters. And within 5 to 10 years, this uh, amount is supposed to go up to 50 million. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely a lot. So uh, when, you, when you look at the production of growing meat in the future, you have to look at China. That autonomy. And what drew you to participate today in the Global Landscapes Forum? Um, what are you hoping to achieve or to learn from today's experience? There's always something to learn. I remember, uh, uh, well, I'd like to quote a professor of mine uh, a long time ago. He said, you have learned everything when all your fingers have the same length. So that means never. Yeah. So you're, you're here to learn, yeah? I, I like to learn. I, if, if I have information that I can uh, pass on to other people, I like to do that.